right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is uh, part three of our DNA unit. We're looking at uh, protein synthesis and more specifically translation. So here's our little pics from last time. So just a little refresher because everything that happened in translation, or sorry, transcription, we have to make sure that we know about because uh, the product is what happens or what goes into translation. So transcription, as we know, it was where the DNA molecule was broken apart by our RNA polymerase. Uh, the RNA mol or nucleotides paired complementary uh, to all the different DNA bases and then at the end we just had this single RNA strand that was able to leave and then our DNA coiled back up like nothing happened. We have these three RNA molecules. This is the one that was just produced through transcription. Uh, we have tRNA which we're going to be talking about today and also we'll mention our RNA as well. All right, so let's get right into it. So the whole goal of this gene expression is to make a protein. Uh, in order to make a protein, we need to know what the sequence of amino acids is going to be. So luckily for us, the mRNA, which was made during transcription, uh, has that message. It has the code to tell what order they need to be in. In order for this to happen, though, it has to go to the ribosome because that's where protein synthesis occurs. So like I was just saying, the goal of translation is the mRNA tells what order the amino acid should be in in order to make that protein. So here's just a little visual here. We have our mRNA leaving the nucleus and it ends up going to a ribosome where the amino acids are going to be produced. So the exact process of translation before we get into it, you got to look at what the code is. So we have these things called codons. It means three letters of mRNA. Those letters will be the D or the RNA bases. And just as a quick reminder, remember a nucleotide is made up of a phosphate, sugar, and then also the base. Okay, So the base is just one part of the nucleotide. So there's 64 different possible codons, possible way that those three letters can be joined together, but it only makes 20 different amino acids. So as you can see, even though a UUU would make an amino acid, uh, phenylalanine, UUC also makes it. You do not have to remember this. This will be given to you in class. The only ones you need to know is this one here, AUG. It's also called the start codon, uh, and the amino acid is methionine. So this will trigger the start of the whole process. And the ones that you also have to be able to not necessarily memorize, but just recognize, are the three stop codons. If you see these uh, letters together, it's going to indicate that you need to stop producing that protein. Otherwise, it's just going on forever, and it wouldn't work. So what does R tRNA do? We talked about what mRNA does. It takes the DNA message to the ribosome. Once it gets there, the stuff called tRNA, I'm just going to bring up the picture of it, is this kind of complicated structure. There's two main things that we care about. One is this end, and it holds the amino acid. And the other end is here, and it's got the anticodon. So we talked about what a codon is. It's on the mRNA strand, where you have a bunch of letters together. So when you have three together, we call it a codon. So what's going to happen is this tRNA is going to come, and its anticodon is going to look for uh, specific letters. More specifically, it's looking for the complementary pair. So as you can see, amino acid binds to one, the anticodon's on the other, and then what it does is binds to a specific codon of mRNA. Okay. So let's look at this in more detail. So there's three steps. All right, so here's the three steps. We're just going to write them down so we have a little reference to, to go off of here. So what we have here is the very beginning is the initiation. So this initiation is where we have our methionine uh, amino acid connected to our TNR, tRNA molecule. Remember, the whole reason that we have tRNA is to bring the amino acid to the mRNA to get in the correct sequence. So we have our start codon, AUG. We have our start anticodon, AUC. They're complementary. It basically just tells it where to go. So once it's there, that's the start of our whole process here. Pairs with the anticodon of tRNA. Oops, tRNA. And that starts the whole process. Okay, so elongation, 
this is where we have our start codon. It's already binded to our start anticodon. And then what happened, another tRNA molecule came in, binded it, its anticodon to the codon of mRNA. And the whole reason why I did this is now this is the correct order. We wanted methionine first and then valine next. So this valine amino acid now forms a peptide bond with the methionine. And now that the start codons, or sorry, the start tRNA brought it, it doesn't need to do anything anymore. It already brought its package and now it can leave. And then what happens is the next uh, tRNA molecule is gonna come. It has its anticodon to match it up on the mRNA codon. It brings another amino acid. Once it comes, it's gonna have another bond uh, form, peptide bond between phenylalanine, PHE, and valine. Okay, so now this is the this is the longest part. So our tRNA molecules brings another an amino acid, and it pairs the codon of the mRNA with the uh, anticodon of tRNA in order to do that. And then the amino acids form uh, peptide bonds between it. Okay? And then once the peptide bond is formed, the tRNA leaves. And, ooh, that's barely legible. And another comes. And it continues to do this until our polypeptide chain is formed. And then how we finish it off is called termination. So as you can see here, we have our stop codon. This is the anticodon that's going to match up with it. But notice it doesn't have an amino acid joined to it. All it has is something called a release factor. So that when it binds, it causes the ribosomes and the mRNA to separate. And the polypeptide chain now goes into the cytoplasm where it can fold and become a protein. So the stop codon binds with the anticodon and no amino acid but it has a release factor so basically what it does is it stops translation and that's it and then we have our polypeptide chain which was the whole point of it and the polypeptide chain is in the exact sequence that we wanted to based on what the mRNA strand told us so here the sequence of our uh, mRNA is going to be leaving the nucleus and it's going to gather in the cytoplasm which is just the uh, in-between space between any of the organelles. As you can see we have a bunch of amino acids getting ready to go and here's what we're looking at here. So if we look at the RNA strand you see these individual nucleotides. So this is all of the RNA that you made during transcription. We have our ribosome going to be joining up we have the new terms we talked about, the codon, which is just three nucleotides. And it's just going to start to read the sequence. As you can see, we have AUG, which is our start codon. It codes for the amino acid methionine. And here it comes. So here's our amino acid joined together with our tRNA molecule. Looking at our anticodon, so this is the complementary basis for the mRNA strand. Uh, here we go. So this is our tRNA molecule. It's big and complicated and looks really weird, uh, but we're going to talk about what they do in, in another second. So all that the tRNA has, it's got the anticodon and then the amino acid here. So what's going to happen is the amino acids uh, being attached to tRNA are going to bind to the anticodon. It continues along, the ribosome continues along, the next anticodon is placed and the next amino acid. And then what happens in between the two amino acids, this peptide bond forms. And then it just keeps going on. As you can see, the tRNA left because its amino acid was already placed. And now a new one can come along, find its anticodon. The bond is going to be formed again, and then the next one can leave. And it just continues this process until it finds the stop codon. Stop codon, all it is, is just three uh, letters that signify stop. There's no amino acid attached. It's just going to tell everything to break apart. 
And then the final thing we have is just this polypeptide strand, which will end up folding and becoming a protein like that. And it happens multiple times. As you can see, this is happening a lot in our, our cells because we need a lot of prote proteins. It's not just happening one at a time. All done. So in summary, what do you need to know? You need to know why it occurs. Why are we using translation? You also need to recognize methionine, which is the start codon, and then most importantly, the three steps of translation and what's happening at each step.